Waynesville City Council meeting agenda uh, August 28th is now in order. Uh, Ed, would you lead us in invocation? Heavenly Father, we're coming for you tonight asking your blessings on this council and we conduct our business in a, in a manner that is beneficial to our citizens pleasing in, in your sight. We ask your blessings on all, all of our armed forces, their families, wherever they may be, and on the, the workers and, and people of this city that keep us going. Amen. 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 Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, All right, we have an open public hearing for the ad valorem tax rate. Do we have any citizens' comments regarding ad valorem? Come forward, give your name and address. She's not here for ad valorem, she's here for our park board. Issue. Okay, well, no. Yeah, yeah, park, no. We're at ad valorem right now. <laughs> This is citizens' comments for ad valorem tax. Do we have any council comments regarding ad valorem tax? No comments? Public hearing is closed. We have a proposed ordinance. 2022-27. An ordinance fixing the ad valorem property tax rates for the city of Waynesville for the year 2022 on all taxable property within said city. Second reading, an ordinance fixing the ad valorem property tax rates for the city of Waynesville for the year 2022 on all taxable property within said city. Do I have a motion to uh, this? Head? Do I have a second? Yes, Amanda? Any other discussion? Roll call? Councilman Farnham? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Connolly? Yes. Councilman Coyne? Yes. Thank you. All right. Do we have any citizens' comments? This is not for the park board. This is citizens' comments in general. That, 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 would, be, that would be you. <laughs> okay. Yes. 21455 Sale Road, Queensville. Um, I would like to address the City Council about the WSR program. I spoke last week to the Park Board, and I, don't, I try to get this into the weather, so I don't know if you've seen my letter or not. Um, you want to go over the points or you want me to read it? Go over the points. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, <laughs> Um, so I've been coaching with WSR for like three years, four years. My seven-year-old is my only child. Um, and we've been in the program since she was three and first um, could play. And so I've seen it both from as a parent and as a coach. Um, uh, we are currently having a lot of issues with game set scheduling and notifications. And I think something that the the city could, could benefit from would be to use um, some kind of software like Team Snap. That way, the coach or the everything the coaches can communicate on there, and the games would be evenly evenly distributed. Currently, we are playing some team, Sometimes we play teams. This is happening over multiple seasons. We'll play one team like three or four times, and we might not play another team at all. And some of those games are very lopsided. So if we're playing a team four times, that's four times one team is going home upset very upset because it wasn't competitive at all. Um, and then registration. Currently our registration for WSR is all in person. We live in a military community. Not kind of highly beneficial. You know, if we did use that software program, we could do online registration. And these military families that are coming in in the spring, they can register their player in February when it opens up for soccer. And so right when they get here, they have something where they can you know, be part of the community and have a team. Uh, team equipment and uh, our equipment is, changes every year. Like I said, I've been a coach 
now for I think four seasons, and every time I come and pick up my soccer bag, it has different things in it. This year, I received four soccer balls and I think six cones. So I need to go out and I have to go find a penny or purchase on my dime, um, something for my goalie to wear. You know, my balls were deflated. Um, there's no first aid kit. Every other year, there's been a first aid kit. You know, every year it changes. So my thought is, I, volunteers, let's go back in the before and after the season and make sure that it's all there instead of just haphazardly turning it in each, each season. We're not sure we're going to get back. Um, field lighting and infrastructure. The soccer fields have lights, which works well for us here in the fall. Um, uh, they don't always get turned on, which is frustrating. Sometimes we wait for, you know, um, he comes out and turns them on, but that's usually 30, sometimes it could be 30 minutes, or if they have a call and we're, we're left out there without the lights, there's not currently a WSR representative out there to turn on lights. Um, and then we also noticed during baseball, baseball did start late this year um, to numerous reasons, and so we were playing late in the evening, and when it played late in the evening, it would get dark, and the baseball fields currently do not have lights. I've heard that the flood's taken them out. I'm not sure if that's true or not. But the jail lights would come on after our games, and their exterior lights would actually light up our field that would be adequate for our kids to play. So I, my thought process on that is, you know, I know it's county money versus city money, I don't know how all that works, but possibly teaming up with them, and they turn on their lights 30 minutes earlier so the kids can play, can play ball. Um, and I think that would help out even with some of the soccer fields if we can't fit all the soccer fields down where the actual lights are this fall. Um, and that WSR sport representative, I know Mr. Bales, he works, you know, and this is nothing against Mr. Bales, I, I have nothing negative against him. I know he works like the typical 9 to 5 hour, 9 to 5 or 8 to 4 or whatnot. And so at the evening time when games are being played, uh, and on Saturday mornings when games are being played, nobody from WSR is out there. So a few weeks ago for baseball, we needed baseball plates. Someone called, he did wake up, and he said, oh, I just woke up. Uh, unfortunately, they never got out there, so we ended up using parents as the, the plates. Yes, they're t-balls, so I mean, the kids didn't care. But to me, that was a missed opportunity because there was not a representative out there on the field. And it was a, kind of a frustration to some of the parents, because that was you know, a continued issue. Um, and I mean, having a representative out there will help when we do have interactions with parents and coaches or parents with parents, um, and then you can actually see what the field, you know, the field's like, or how you know, the refs are doing, or whatnot. Uh, and then, again, Mr. Mr. Bales is just one person that I believe that he's the only one that runs the Facebook page. I don't know if any of you have been to the WSR Facebook page. Some days it's professional, sometimes it's not. And I understand that there's a lot of parents who argue with him in the comments and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm sure that's very frustrating for him to read the negativity posts or whatnot and the frustrations. I mean, social media is it's harsh nowadays. You know, that's what people use as their front. As you can tell, nobody's here voicing their concerns with me. They want to voice it via Facebook. Um, but that often questions get asked on there, and they go unanswered because of it's a weekend or an evening, and it might be pertaining to a game, or that's how he sends out notifications. So for the soccer, uh, the coaches meeting for soccer, an hour and a half prior to the coaches meeting, a post was made, and that's how coaches were supposed to know that they had to be here to pick up their gear. And I, and I think a more adequate time or texting coaches or something <coughs> different. Going back to that, that scheduling app, maybe you could blast it out to the coaches that have already signed up and people can be notified or made aware where they need to be so they can donate their time. Um, and then lastly, I would like you, I would like to invite everyone on the city council to come out. Come out to the soccer fields. Talk to parents. See what's going on during the times. They're all the time. So I mean, you, you see that there's Sometimes there's issues. There's a lot of times we don't even play on the fields. We'll just, we play, like I buy personal gear because the fields are taken up. Because there's, you know, inconsistencies with different so I, I was types. a soccer coach for quite some time too, and a baseball coach for Waynesville St. Robert. Before I got here, I, I didn't know what was going on. 
How much is the budget for the Wayneville St. Robert? So <clears throat> typically the budget is around 40,000 to 60,000 depending upon, you know, what needs to be bought. I've seen 15 to 20,000 dollars swing in the, in that budget. And St. Robert pays half of that, we pay half of that. Right. So if you figure Mr. Bale's salary alone, yes sir, probably almost reaches that cap. Uh, we can't pay him overtime. To be out on the soccer fields at night after five o'clock, we would have to pay him overtime. We have to pay him overtime on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, we, we just don't get the funding for it. Uh, it's the bad part, I guess. Um, as a coach, I used to have to buy a whole bunch of stuff. Matter of fact, if you need it, it's still in my ship. I've got plates, I've got cones, I've got soccer balls, I've got all kinds of stuff. So if you give me your number, I've actually been trying to get rid of it for several years. Um, St. Roberts is about to take over the limit. We are in a transition for, um, the agreement was made several years ago that Waynesville would have the uh, youth sports program for five years and it would then transition to St. Robert for five years. But somewhere in that agreement, there was a lost year. This is actually the sixth year that Waynesville has had the program. And, but they will take over January 1. With that said, the app that you're talking about, is there a cost to the app or is there a It's a monthly cost. Um, I love the local soccer leagues like Team Justice uses it. It's we have tried an app like, like that Justice. in the past. It, and I mean, it works for a league. I'm not there's, saying there, there, There's the it's lopsided like, it's like 18 team bucks stuff there. Is it? Yeah. But, but my goal was to offer, like, if I have concerns, to offer something, some kind of solution. I didn't want to come up here and just waste your time with, like, that's the thing. And Sometimes I, the only solution is to actually get volunteers and, and you know, military or stuff like that that come in and out. Um, but if we get actual volunteers that will come during the day and help Mr. Bales out, they are informed enough to be out on the soccer fields and keep parents from choking each other out. But it takes volunteers because we just don't have the funding for it. Either that or there's a a shift in the time requirement, maybe use them in the times that is needed. Just an idea of coming in half the day. And I would say we well, actually tried that three we years do. ago. We do. We utilize think. that some. Um, some of the time frames I'm sure she references, uh, keep in mind we have sign up at a certain time when you'll have a season going on. So fall soccer sign up could be con conflicting with um, softball, baseball, or something else right. going on. But there is definitely, he has the ability to shift his time um, to cover maybe some evening practices or Saturday games where, you know, the city, and, and not just Mr. Bells, we've had several youth sports directors over the past five, six years. And right, I've been through three. Like yeah, seven. We've, we've allowed them to. I was going to say three years ago when we, we did let it, let's say he left here at eight and he came back at 10. All those parents that wanted to sign up between 8 and 10 got on that Facebook page and cursed him out because he wasn't here and he was diverting his time from 10 to 6. And then they got mad about the other. So it's, it's, it's almost a double-edged sword. Yes. I mean, I, I know that it's difficult. I'm, I mean, I donate my time to the coach so I can have, a, you know, a sword in the fight. I put, I put my time out there. And you get yelled at by every parent, I'll guarantee it. I do. I get hollered at. I do. Um, but I, and, you know, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, oblivious that my kid's going to probably leave WSR and go to a different league because it's, it's a rec league and if she wants to play higher, then, you know, or whatnot. But it, WSR is important enough to me that I'm standing here and I dislike public speaking. It's important enough to me that I, this needs to be in the community. You know, these other leagues that are standing up and, because instead of being here, you know, voicing their frustrations, they're standing up leagues. And the, I mean, we got a new baseball league, we got a couple new soccer leagues, and I, we're going to lose our players to that. But then the players that can't afford it, you know, they're going to lose their ability to have a sports, you know, to some sport to play or the mentorship from a coach. And I, I strongly believe that's something that our youth needs needs to have that mentorship. Um, can I give you my number? Yes, sir. So if we have a parent out there that wants to volunteer, 
It's on the thing. He told me not to give it out loud. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on the front page of the city. In WSR's office. That's yeah. right. And there's actually a volunteer application on mm -hmm. the city's Not website that they can fill out. Okay, mm -hmm. so volunteers on the city's website, mm -hmm. volunteer application. Okay. And there's a vetting process with that as well? Yeah. He, they were yes. just talking about the volunteer applications on the... Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> on the city website. We it's could, not advertised, I don't believe, like, we could probably you know, Mr. Bales, maybe, maybe cry, okay. ask for help. Yeah. Put it out there. I need someone two hours this week to help me out with this. Can can we post that on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Just uh, hey, mm -hmm. we need a. Yeah. And can we look and find that app, or do we already? Yeah. We have tried an app in the past. Uh, we tried an app uh, roughly a year and a half ago. The issue with the app is you get everybody signed up, and you find yourself spending more time updating the app than actually putting information on the app for people to use. So. Uh, one example is we went through one season with the with a similar app. I don't know if it was this one. And, and um, what what happened was we got all the coaches signed up, and then two coaches left, and then the parents wanted it, and then you, we never got it. And then the season was over by the time you had everybody kind of lined in, and it it turned out to be a lot of work um, trying to make sure that the people. And then when your coaches are involved. Maybe they got the app and didn't tell the parents, and it really didn't make the job of the um, youth sports director, it didn't make his job any, it made it worse. Well, the coach didn't tell us. Well, it's on the app, well, we want the app. So you end up having, you don't know who has the app, who doesn't have the app, uh, what coaches told their parents, hey, our practice time uh, was given to us was, you know, six to seven o'clock or whatever the case may be. And, and um, it, it didn't work well our first go on a similar app, maybe not the one that you are, you know, referencing. Whenever I was coaching, I used Mailchimp, but it was only for my team. I used Remind for my team because we live the, the school uses Remind, so the, mainly everyone has Remind. But that doesn't help with scheduling. You know, all of you six, you eight, you ten, and getting those an equal amount of games. The coaches don't sit down at the beginning of the year like the coaches meeting and decide to schedule them. No, we are told what it is. And a lot of the scheduling with that, um, again, with St. Robert uh, coming up, the, the sports coming up, excluding soccer, which will be uh, winter sports, basketball, volleyball, those schedules are um, determined by the school, school district, Waynesville High School, Middle School, East Elementary, Freedom Elementary, depending upon what gym you're able to get and utilize for that sport. That depends upon the schedule that we're allowed to um, have those facilities. So scheduling some of these are difficult. Waynesville or uh, St. Robert has a uh, one baseball slash softball field um, that that we have tried to schedule as well. So coordination of the facilities, other than soccer, and the reason I say that is all the soccer games are in Waynesville. They're all and practices are all hosted. In right. Rainsville, um, St. Robert doesn't provide fields for that sport. I did ask to use the St. Robert field, and I was said I could, and then their city council saw us out there, and they they were like, "You don't believe we can't be on here." Um, so I I don't I think it would be better, you know, advantageous just to have if you're in charge of it that year, why aren't they in charge of that field also? I think that'd be part of the program. Good questions. <laughs> Should be answer that one. We've been asking that question. I mean, it, it would make our suits go a little smoother because that one's not in the flood zone. We could at least get some games through there and how many soccer fields we can put in that outfield if they're not currently playing softball on it. So, that's all the questions or the comments I have. You did a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Hey, before you leave, I would like to commend you to uh, everybody in the council and those watching on TV that you have brought problems to the council, but you've also brought us some ideas and solutions and that's rare. Most of the time we just hear the, the problem that they're having and they haven't thought through a way to, um, you know, work through the issue or, or solution to the issue. So I appreciate that greatly. Thank you. I, I mean, I was going to add, I heard that there was an opening, an open position for an assistant. There will be one posted. Um, and interviews will be set up between uh, both cities, yes. 
Okay, and I wanted to, I wanted to add system. for that is, I know that the city puts it out on their Facebook page and possibly on Indeed. Mm -hmm. Another avenue of approach, Fort Leonard Wood quarterly has a hiring fair, and it's free for employers. Set up a booth and table that you can do it. There's interview rooms there, and it's a hell of a post, and it would be a greater platform for more people to see that there's open positions here in the community. John, Thank you. We, we have a copy of her letter. I do. I'd like to have a copy of it. Okay. Thank you very much. No other citizen comment? There's no special guest presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I do apologize. I've never done this before. And I'm also it's part so easy of hearing, so I can actually go over a little bit of what Megan's already done. Um, what is, do you need my name? My name and address. My name is Jamie Irwin. My address is 103 Prospect Street in Waynesville. Uh, I am also a soccer coach, and I have noticed a lot of difficulties as well as with scheduling, coaching, and volunteers. I am coaching three soccer teams this season alone. This is only my second year of coaching, or my second season of coaching. Last, co last season, U6 wasn't going to get the option to play unless the coaches wound up taking additional teams. We need more volunteers. We need more avenues. We need to get this out to the public and let them know these children are our future, whether they are military or they are permanent members of this community. I am here for the kids, or I wouldn't have signed up for three, three soccer teams from ages three to nine. And y'all got kids? That's not gonna be fun. <laughs> and I guarantee you, unless you guys wanna come out and volunteer, it's going to be one heck of a soccer season. It is going to be hard because unfortunately, Mr. Steve, he's alone. He needs help. I volunteered last season. I have a medical office degree. I volunteered to do it for free to assist him. Never got a phone call, ever. As for us only having forty to sixty thousand dollars a year, if I'm correct, for putting towards seasonal and soccer and gear and everything like, why are we not reaching out to businesses? Tax deductions. That is the number one key to get businesses as well as any members of the community to volunteer their money over. It is a free tax deduction in order to give money to a community purpose. They will do anything, trust me. I've done there, been there, done that. I was in high school when I organized a fundraiser. Businesses such as CC's Pizza, when I lived down in Joplin, over $2,000 versus donations because it was a tax deduction. This is not that hard. Unfortunately, I understand that you all are very overwhelmed, but we've got to do better for our kids. I have two kids in this, the sports, in this community. And I have, been, I have been in this community since 1993 when my grandfather was sergeant major at this post. I've been off and on living in this area. And I see nothing but the sports teams going further and further down unless it was dealing with the school district itself because they have money from the government and the taxes. We need to have our regular kids also that cannot go into the school and do the sports there because I'm sorry, I don't have $250 to fill in darn cheerleading shoes. We have to be able to have it where our military people can come in, a form, somehow online, better advertised other than Facebook because that avenue is dying, unfortunately. People aren't going to know to look up WSR. They're not going to know to go to Waynesville and click on this link. We need to have better advertising for our soccer, for our baseball, for any other sports in this area. And, and I know I do most of the talking, I guess. It's illegal for a government organization to elicit money from a private. Not person. illegal for a community. It's not illegal for us to go out there and solicit. You can go out all you want, but us at City Hall can't go ask citizens.
solution and you're aggravated with it, but it's kind of insulting. I have kids also. I've had four kids in this community since 2000, and one was the first time I came here as a pilgrim. For somebody to come in here and tell me that I'm not willing to take care of kids, I do every single thing. When I said I'm done with that soccer field, I wasn't. I was on the phone. So we've tried numerous amounts of things. But when you're talking $40,000 for baseball, soccer, softball, basketball, everything, it's just not a whole lot of money. And if the city could go out and go, I own a company in Waynesville also, right? If they came to me and said, hey, can I get $200? I would give them $200. I'd probably give them $1,000. But then the lawyer sitting there in the back is going to tell somebody that we can't collect money from private citizens outside of a tax, a resolution, or an ordinance. What about getting parents to do a fundraiser or something that are have had background checks? Because we've all had our background checks. And I'm going to say, parents can do that. But, but the parents have to do it. The CD can't How do we get the parents to be able to do it? And um, come together, say, the coaches. We have, I don't know, what it, what are they called? Uh, where basically like a little fair where parents, if they come out, or we do a pledge phone call, or something like that. Go ahead, David. You can set up a foundation, 
appreciate you being here. I appreciate everybody in this room. Uh, I, I wish I could do something. Always here to hear the information and You can start at City Council. They like you. Oh, no. The reason, the reason I'm always running in the park is because I'm trying to lose weight. Trying to win you a city hall. I haven't had that success. Yeah, I haven't had that success. When I was on the park board, I ate like 20 boxes of chocolate, and I'm allergic to chocolate. So everybody up here can buy some boxes of chocolate. Even Halloween candy. But you remember that. Amanda, you remember that. Yes, we did. We did. We did a lot of fundraising stuff. But the, right. but with, the park board guy is behind you. Is that what? The park board guy is, guy is right behind you. The park board president. Hi. So you're the gentleman. You got to wait. Citizens come, man. Come up here. We have chat. <laughs> okay. Can the park board raise the money? No, we don't want to do that. I don't even know if we want to dip our toe into that part. Huh? Um, well, our board is still part of the city. Yes, yeah. our board is still part of the city. Yeah. It's so a committee of the city. We just bought into whatever fundraising yes. somebody else was The parents doing. can do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, the city, the city. So the parents the city set up a, the a McDonald's so sign. Yeah, the city can accept the donations. They just can't elicit the donations. Uh, yeah. the so, you know, let's say the 501C, and, and like Nathan will help you set up a 501C. I think there's a lawyer downtown that I could probably get to help you also. Uh, but Nathan's good at it. I've done a lot of work. Then we will have a chat, sir. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Any more citizens comment? We have two really good ones. <laughs> no special guest presentation. Boards. Or board. <laughs> Well, it's hard to follow them. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say that we've discussed those kinds of things before. It seems like there's a, I don't know, we get so far and then we just, solutions just don't happen. Uh, we have some of the same concerns and we've had other citizens come in, talk to us about these same things. So we really, we'll start working a little harder on it with Steve. He's our, he's our man for it. And, uh, the, and the fundraisers did come from WSR before. They were, they were good chocolates, I should say, because I had some myself. But if there's anything I can think that we can legally do other than, other than that, then let me know. We also, we kind of, we kind of think more along the lines of, uh, Improving the park or improving the fields and things like that than, than we normally do uh, get in the weeds with the WSR as far as the volunteers and stuff goes. But that's something we can certainly work a little harder on. The park board received a, a last Wednesday, August 11th, we met, we call the order at 6 o'clock. The park board received a certificate of appreciation from Team Justice U.S. Soccer for our support of the first annual three by three tournament. They also gave awards to businesses in our city, along with the police and firefighters. So we had quite a few people here in the audience last week. And uh, we appreciate that so much. 
Now, when it comes to the park, <coughs> the things that we've been thinking about mostly has been things like we might see dugouts for the kids to get into when they're not batting or whatever or outfielding so they get the sun gets pretty hot here in the summer. Now we give them a little shade uh, for a little bit. We've also thought about a refreshment stand, also a backboard where businesses could advertise. If and we'll look at the legalities of seeking support, but uh, from them as they do that. We also continue discussing naming a few of the pavilions. Uh, I think we're down about three that hasn't been named or or have somebody representing it. So we're going to work on that. And, uh, and we thought about asking the WCC at the high school if they uh, could make the metal science for us. So give them a job. They're always looking for uh, tasks and jobs to do with the skills they're teaching the teenager. Rachel Watson, the new director of the Pulaski Master Gardeners, was present for her first meeting. She reported that they were going to work some more and kind of beef up the garden at the RV park. Um, also, our next scheduled meeting is September the 8th at 6 o'clock, and we adjourn at 7.05. Any questions, Fred? John, I have a question. I think, did we discuss or talk about in the past about some kind of refreshment stand that could be mm -hmm. set up down there? Did we run into a particular problem with that? Well, we, um, we are, have in the past and are going to again this time. Our discussion with that was grant opportunities for that type of facility in the, in the park. And these are the same grants that we um, were able to construct or build our existing restrooms with. Um, that, you, that we have located throughout the park. Um, this grant's coming up and we are expecting to apply again for that grant. But yes, there was a, there was a location which they have, we have sent this map to, to this grant several times showing a location for a um, kind of a refreshment stand that would uh, also have restrooms on the backside, some storage areas we've even discussed as to uh, being able to have like an equipment room to store the, the bases down there and, and some other things. So, yeah, you, you remember correctly, yeah. Mayor. Jeff, get with me either if you're here at the end of this meeting, get with me, or tomorrow evening when we are when we meet together. Yeah. And I've got some ideas for you on the covers for people. Thank you. Thank you. Planning and zoning, Mr. Davis. Ooh. I don't have the report. Yes, I probably am. Thank you all for coming. Hmm? Planning and Zoning Committee was called to order August 9, 2022, 5.30. The approval of the minutes uh, from June 14th were approved. There was an open public hearing on a conditional use permit. Uh, conditional use permit to allow a 100-foot radio tower to be placed in the R6 uh, school district uh, transportation building located off of Highway F. Um, there were some comments from uh, Erica Kruger Brown, uh, owns the property. She stated that she was looking at the water tower, ambulance. She, she said there was too many towers up on the hill. Uh, we had some discussion and informed her that the one tower was going to go up and the other tower was going to go down next to it. Um, after that, she uh, was in agreement. Uh, we closed the public hearing. Uh, and made a motion to send that to City Council. Uh, we also talked about the preliminary plat for Bar Porn Estates 2. Uh, Nathan uh, Carmen discussed the plat, provided uh, Angie Gable. Uh, she was also here, uh, asked, Twyla asked if the fees had been paid. Nathan said that there was just a preliminary, there were no fees yet. Uh, Ms. Dills 
asked why the road wouldn't go all the way around, and there was a lot, uh, basically, uh, that was explained. Um, basically, Page Street would still be open. Uh, Trudy Dills and Scott Owens would like the builder to consider connecting the road and looping it around as there are already issues going up and down the hill. Uh, Uh, Twyla Cordry uh, made a motion or entertained a motion to uh, send this t uh, to pass it and it passed unanimous unanimously with no further actions meeting was adjourned at 554 next scheduled meeting is third September 13th at 530 thank you any questions for mr. Davis all right we have a proposed ordinance <laughs> bill 2022-25 an ordinance approving a conditional use permit for a radio tower at 1525 Highway F, Waynesville, Missouri, fixing an effective date. The second reading, an ordinance approving a conditional use permit for a radio tower at 1525 Highway F, Waynesville, Missouri, fixing an effective date. Any other discussion on this? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Second, anyone? Amanda? Roll call. Councilman Farnham? Yeah. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Connolly? Yes. Councilman Corners? Yes. Thank you. All right, we have a proposed resolution. Reading, please. Resolution approving a preliminary plat of phase two of Briar Point Estates. Any discussion on that, or do I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Mr. Liberty? Second, anyone? Second. Mr. Rice? Any other discussion? I, I make a like the idea. Well, apparently, the Page Street will become a dead end street. They're planning on putting a road in and blocking the Page Street from joining. So you end up with another dead end street. Don't don't like that. We have a roll call on that. Councilman Corey. In Bradford. On uh Because isn't Jared a dead end? Jared. Talking about Jared Street. Yeah, no, Street. he said he said Page. It's it's Jared. Jared Street. Jared Street comes from one way, and Jared Street comes from the other. Going to make the one end of Jared Street a cul-de-sac. Right up at the top. And put lot one where Jared Street would come through. Right. So they would make that like a I think like a hammerhead right, or so something. Right. So this is the dead end. At the end, so mm -hmm. that lenses can turn around. Mm -hmm. This isn't a dead end. Looks like a dead end to me. Does that black line mean it's blocked? I think that might just be a mistake. I think that road's coming all the way through to Jared Street. So which which street are you referencing? Page Street he's and Jared Street. He's referencing Page. Page on this shows it goes through. The um, the the black line, the dark black line represents um, Jared Street. The reason Page Street on the south side is not bold is because that's an existing right of way. I do notice that on Page Street it is 40 feet wide, which is unusual, but was approved by council back when this was developed. But Page Street on this plat remains open as a true street and would tie into this Jared Street. As, as platted, it's not a page street, it's not a dead end street. I've got a question for you, John. Mm -hmm. Is this developer, does he own the land on the other side where we're talking about being a dead end? Ed's referring to? No, Ed's referring to right here. Ed's referring to page. Okay. That's not a dead end. Yeah, but what I'm getting at is 
does this developer own the adjacent properties for future development? That's what I'm trying to get to. Mm -hmm. I believe just on the north side, not on the west or the south of the Briar Point Estates Phase 2. And I'm not sure. He may own some additional lots, but I know that they have really been developed through the last couple years. Councilman Corrin, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman Connolly? No. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Farnham? Yes. Thank you. Moving on, Utility Committee. Councilman Connolly. The Utility Committee has a regular meeting on August the 2nd. The entire committee was there along with the city staff. Uh, and two visitors, Randy Brown and Keith Pritchard. The, the uh, minutes were approved from the pre previous meeting. We talked about the uh, solid waste sanitation sign up, and Mr. Doyle gave us a, uh, what to present the committee with, with a sign up form slash agreement to review, and this form will be and delivered to each commercial business in the city of Wayne. That is in progress as we speak. Uh, a deposit in the amount of one month services will be required. And for some of the people, that would be a very large deposit. And so we've agreed to allow them to pay it in payment. But actually, divided in, into 12 payments and added to their bill each month until it was paid. And of course they had the option of paying the entire amount up front or making other arrangements. The form needs to be returned to the city no later than August 31st. We also discussed reimbursement of utility deposits and we actually ended up tabling the the matter. We'll look at it later. Mr. Doyle provided us with a copy of the letter that has been mailed to the sewer district about our rate increases and also a certified certified mail and we had to return receipt. The Verizon wireless tire. Mr. Doyle presented the committee information about the Verizon Wireless Tower that was, that was vetoed in June by the mayor to, at City Council. And a copy of the Missouri, Missouri Revised Statutes 77.270. We were informed that according to statute, that the, the statute provides should the mayor neglect or refuse to sign any ordinance and return the same with his objections in writing at the next regular meeting of the council, the same shall become law without his signature. And since this was not done, the Verizon Tower will be built. And department updates, Mr. Sheldon said his department had two outages, two Two street lights, four trees, ten miscellaneous, five new services, one net metering, and two fixed charges for the month, month of July. Major highlights for July include continued work on the Vista, extending the primary in the park, setting a new transformer, started back to work on the feeder lines, B, B to C time and the uh, GIS data collection of, of our electrical system. We have two feeders completed and half of the third one. Single phase reclosures saved seven power outages in the month of July. Donnie Beal stated that the water wastewater department 
had eight new meters installed. We prepared three water leaks, put in a new drain water meter at the admin building, fixed the hydrant, or repaired the hydrant, reinstalled the hydrant, however you want to put it, in downtown area, had two sewer, two sewer backups. DNR inspection was set for the following Tuesday at the every three years, and having no further business, we closed 415. Any questions for Mr. Connolly? Economic development, Councilman Rice. Yes, the meeting was called to order at 5 p.m. There were no citizens' comments. Mr. Randy Brown was present as a guest. The minutes were approved for July 5th meeting. We discussed the business spotlight, which for August is MMI plumbing and ex excavation. We also discussed new businesses in Waynesville, the Smile Nutrition, which is located inside the Phelps Health. We also talked about Endlessly Blessed Boutique, which is located at the Ruby Plaza. Uh, we also discussed Amazon Distribution Partnership Program. It's uh, 20 Waynesville businesses were sent, uh, sent in for referral. It's a great program for small businesses. Doug Potts put together a list of comp uh, businesses and submitted that to the chamber and if selected has a potential to help businesses make fifteen dollars to $18,000 a year. Basically, it's delivering packages for Amazon within Waynesville. It's a seven day a week job. I think it was 10 to 25 packages, something like that. Um, also discussed commercial trash services, commercial trash services. The new one begins September 1st, which I talked about. Uh, we discussed hogs and frogs, the emergency services first responders meeting. Mr. Potts discussed the meeting was held already, uh, a lot of law enforcement there. Uh, went over the biking trail grant, trails grant with Greenway on and off road. It's the Great Rivers Greenway has a large connection of pine trails in the area and there's a grant money out there that wants to GIS map all of the trails. Could possibly have some money to make other trails or our trails more bike friendly. Uh, went on the special events, several have already happened. National Night Out, the movies in the park, the Price Cutter 55th anniversary, which was pretty big. Uh, the Route 66 yard sale, which was two days, already happened. Then we discussed the Route 66 Hogs and Frogs, which is going off September 23rd to the 25th. Uh, the Leapfrog 5K Frog Hill Half Marathon, September 30th. Tadpole 10K, October 1st. The Halloween at the Market, October 29th. The Pumpkin Fest, October 29th as well, 11 to 3 p.m. There was a need for closed session. We entered at 5.17 p.m. We came out of closed session at 6.17 p.m. Having no further business, the meeting adjourned at 6.18 p.m. Next scheduled meeting will be held on September 6th at 5 p.m. Any questions for Mr. Rice? Roads and grounds. Councilman Farnham. Roads and grounds, man, on August 4th is 415, which is an earlier time than our normal meeting. Uh, the meeting was called to order. Uh, we had no citizen comments. We approved the minutes. And then we had a citizen, Sean Fleming, who had reached out to the city in reference to the intersection of Long Drive and Collier Drive. Uh, there was a yield sign instead of a stop sign, which was safety concern. Uh, Administrator Doyle stated he could not find the ordinance for the signage on Long Drive. And the yield sign needs to be changed to a stop sign. And I suggested that we post the information on the city website just so people have a heads up. Project updates. Mr. Doyle discussed the subdivision improvement program. Mesa and Will Vista should be asphalted by the end of October. Uh, Jason Chapman, the road supervisor, gave his updates. Stated the street department has been busy doing some major patchwork. Built some park gates, finished pouring the fitness pad, removed fallen trees and keeping the stump dump cleaned up and brush over, spraying, sweeping, and contracted out more than 200 more tons of salt for the winter. 
I hope we don't need it, but if it needs, we will have it. Uh, uh, majestic and Pinnacle streets have had, will have uh, installed electric sewer water will be next year, early spring. The other business I brought up that this past month I had witnessed a couple of people fall getting out of their vehicles trying to get up onto the sidewalk in front of the post office. And I was kind of wanting to put a handrail there to help them to have something to grab onto so they wouldn't fall down. Uh, they did get out there and they redid the paint job on it into a kind of a dirty mustard yellow, but it's very noticeable. <laughs> did that real quick. Uh, if you wonder if you've seen it, you'll, this is why. <laughs> anyway, I asked if we had any updates on the Sweet Burke Road. <coughs> We've had some people reach out to us and put some emails on the internet and stuff. And uh, Mr. Doyle stated the goal is to have it addressed by spring of next year. We need easements that will affect a couple of driveways that we're working on that. So the early spring, you know. Having no further business, we are at 451. The next scheduled meeting will be September 1, 2022 at 5 p.m. Any other questions for Mr. Farnham? Yes, I got a quick one. Uh, the stoplight down here by LMC Convenience and the credit union, on the, when you turn left as you're coming this way or right, whatever, the, it doesn't have the arrow, the yellow arrow for the turn. I've had two people that I work with, and then Rex there, and they're on me, see if we can get that fixed. Like, if you go up by, uh, Come and go up there. They've got the yellow arrow that flashes when it's you're still green, but you know your yellow arrow. I wonder if they could get that changed. Yeah. Yes. So we have sent that concern to Moda for um, to see if they can address that with their that's their signalized okay. intersection. Um, and that's Good. that's as far as I okay. can take it. I can't I can't take it any farther than that. Perfect. John, I, I think that maybe you and planning and our roads and grounds ought to be looking into an ordinance. We've been in this problem with this cell tower. We need a better control of our properties for zoning. So I think that's something we ought to look into to stipulate where they can and cannot go. In our codes, for I sure. Full, I fully agree with that. Yeah. We, um, we were working on that, Nathan and I. Um, I think he's in review of one that I sent him. So hopefully he will, we'll get that back in to roads and grounds soon. Yeah. All right, we have a, a bill number 2022-26. An ordinance approving an agreement between the City of Waynesville and the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for Transportation Alternatives Funding, fixing an effective date. Second reading, an ordinance approving an agreement between the City of Waynesville and the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for Transportation Alternatives Funding, fixing an effective date. Do I have a motion for this ordinance? Motion. Mr. Liberty, I have a second. Mr. Cecil, any discussion? Roll call. Do you want to explain what we're doing with this? Not yet. We will wait. Until we Councilman go. Farnham? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Connolly? Yes. Councilman Corn? Yes. Thank you. All right, please committee. Councilman Liberty. I'll be brief today, Mayor. Oh, oh. All right, so um, the Emergency Services and Police Committee, um, we had the meeting on August 4th at 3.30 uh, p.m. We had a quorum. Um, we did have guests um, from the Emergency Services, uh, our department, our um, Pulaski County <laughs> Emergency, Emergency Services Director, uh, which is Shauna McCullum and her assistant, Jenna Schwartz. and. Um, we called the meeting to order at 3.30. The, the minutes were approved from the previous meeting. Um, and the reason for their visit was to help build a relationship. Um, Ms. McCullum has shared a lot of uh, information about what she has envisioned for her purpose and role here um, to serve our community. So um, as far as the report itself, um, she shared some additional training opportunities that we will be partnering with. Um, and how we can, can uh, foster a better relationship between the city and the county when it comes to preparing for events and so forth and so on. Um, the police department updates, um, Lieutenant Mark uh, Powell's, he stated the police department was approved for a grant 
um, for ammo. Um, this is a pending grant for um, soft targets, barricades, and metal barriers. We also discuss um, special events only, the special events that had to do with the request of police services, which was, of course, um, the Hogs and Frogs was the only one that was identified at this time um, of support for the police. And uh, I won't beat a dead horse on that. We already talked about that. All right, so then we went on. We had uh, no further meet, no, no further um, business. The meeting adjourned at 4.16 p.m. The next meeting is scheduled for September 8th, right here at the city at 3.30 p.m. Come out and visit. Any questions for Mr. Wilson? Finance and Human Resources Committee, Councilman Davis. Ooh, the meeting was called to order at 5 p.m. on August 16th. The quorum was established. Uh, there were no citizens' comments. The committee approved the uh, minutes, and the city approved, or the committee approved to pay the city's bill. Uh, cash flow account status in the year budget review. Committee reviewed the city's cash flow reports, bank account status, and year to, and year to date budget. The city has completed 58.3% of the fiscal year with expenses ending at 66% and revenues 57%. The city bank accounts have a total of 5.3 5 million, 5 .3 million in restricted funds, reserved funds, and usable monies. Um, there is a mid-year budget review, right? Mm -hmm. um, the community improvement district pursuant to section 67.147.4 uh, the Missouri has amended the Westgate Community Improvement District annual report for the fiscal year ended December 31st. It uh, was provided by Gilmore and Bell. The city is required to make this report part of its official records and cause it to be spread upon the records of the city. So it has to be put out. <clears throat> Mid-year adjustments, Mr. Doyle stated the budget adjustments that were approved by City Council in July 2022 are not reflected in this month's budget numbers. The reason is the ordinance has not been signed <clears throat> by the mayor. The budget should reflect the amendments in September 22 when the update to the ordinance becomes effective without signature. Ad valorem property tax rate. Committee discussed the upcoming public hearing set <coughs> setting. Uh, Balloon tax rate be held immediately preceding the city council on <clears throat> August 18th. Uh, that was already done. Other business, censorship of the mayor. I stated that as of the date, the mayor had not provided the committee with an action plan as required. Articles of impeachment have been drafted and received by the finance committee. Uh, the city attorney is preparing the resolution to move forward. Mr. Doyle stated that several day-to-day -day issues have arisen from the mayor's decision not to sign documents. Some examples include Ordinance approved in July regarding the collection of trash deposits from commercial customers, uh, unsigned cemetery deeds that cannot be filed with the county, and ordinance to amend the budget. Mr. Doyle stated that the city clerk, Michelle Brown, has reached out to Mayor Brown on multiple occasions, requesting him to come to City Hall to sign. Committee has asked Ms. Brown to bring an ordinance to the Mayor Brown during the City Council meeting. Did we bring that? Yes. Um, Mr. Dole stated the need for a closed session in accordance uh, with legal and real estate matters. Uh, committee entered into the closed session at 525. Committee returned to open session and open session and adjourned at 550. Next meeting will have to be held September 8, 2022 at 5 p.m. With this said, there is an update to the censorship of the mayor. Uh, the resolution has been written correctly yes. and we are looking perspective date right now for a special session session of August 29th pending any questions uh, one point they say they try to reach out to me I have a cell phone I've got email I haven't received anything all right, that's, that's all the point I'm gonna make right, I'm not gonna argue that point but I went to Michelle's office and you can see that somebody has read the email. I've never received it. Somebody opened it up. Yes, I've never received it. So. <clears throat> I'll break my iPad and you can look at it. I've never received oh, no. it. Okay. Mute point. So. Yes, it is. 
Waynesville uh, St. Robert Joint Air. Oh, we got a proposed ordinance, Bill Number 2022-28. An ordinance to establish procedures for disclosure of conflicts of interest to comply with Senate Bill 262, fixing an effective date. Second reading, an ordinance to establish procedures for disclosure of conflicts of interest to comply with Senate Bill 262, fixing an effective date. We have a motion. I'll make a motion. Mr. Wilson. Second. Second, uh, Ed. Mr. Yep. Mr. Liberty. Goes post center light. Police officers. <laughs> um, any discussion? Roll call. Councilman Corn? Yes. Councilman Conley? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Farnham? Yes. Thank you. Waynesville St. Robert Joint Airport meeting. This is Mr. Liberty. The meeting was called to order by John Doyle at three o'clock, July 26. Budget was provided to the board, which reflected 58% in the year revenue, tracking at 66%. Expenses tracking at 71%. Motion was made in second, and that was approved. Uh, airport operations manager, Mike Guy, stated the price of jet fuel has gone down. SkyWest Airline update, application from SkyWest Charter for community air service authorization. There's been no update provided to us as of yet. Essential air service update, Contour will provide service from, which will be to be announced, to Nashville with a potential start date of possibly October 1st. Next following meeting <coughs> on the terminal will be September 13th at 2 p.m. at Waynesville City Hall. Uh, also uh, went over grant funding, Bob Crane provided update grant funding to be used for the terminal. <coughs> Three million from state general revenue funding with no match. And nine million federal funding with 90% 10% match. Uh, Three million ATB bill funding with 95% with a 5% match. Uh, also, there has been few issues on certified weather observer. Uh, when the equipment goes down, they really don't have anybody right yet to stand it up as far as checking everything out and letting the airline know perspective weather and stuff like that. We have discussed with uh, some certified and very experienced uh, weather technicians, I guess. Observers. Observers. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's still under discussion. And nothing further. Next meeting will be the 23rd. Yep, Tuesday the 23rd at St. Robert. At St. Robert. Great. Any further questions for Mr. Liberty? Other business? We'll bring up those ordinances. I'll sign them for you.
City Manager's report. I'd like to uh, start with something that's not actually in the report, but um, there was some interest earlier with uh, U Sports about volunteer applications. Uh, they, these are posted on the website. Volunteer opportunities may be found on the city's website under the uh, community tab. And it is a volunteer and the form is in there. And if you have any questions, again, you can contact city staff. Um, I would also like to kind of address the TAP grant that you guys have approved. That was a almost $500,000 grant the city was approved for. Um, and it will address or complete a sidewalk project that you guys have done in the past. We'll go from our bridge at the Ruby Dew west to Morgan Street and connect the sidewalks on that side of town. So now, you know, that would be accessible all the way through. I think that, uh, I, I like to thank the staff for their hard work in, in acquiring that, that grant. Um, budget review, it's that time again, we will be going through uh, uh, budget reviews and workshops for each department of the city, probably beginning um, this month, there's a lot of moving parts this year with the grant funds and a lot of grant applications out. There's gonna be a lot of moving parts as we get through and trying to finalize our final budget. And honestly, I hope that we miss a grant um, monies in our budget and have to redo it at the first of the year. I'd like to see us get all the grant monies that, that we've applied for. So we will try to um, accommodate for these grants as they are approved. Uh, or not approved, but if, if we get approved, our budget will try to reflect those. So there'll be a lot of moving parts until these are all um, evaluated. Um, again, I would like to also express that the city of Waynesville will be um, collecting commercial trash beginning September 1, 2022. I know Doug Potts with others have worked very hard to uh, start putting that out. Uh, giving those applications out and discussing what that transition is going to look like. And if you've been through our parks lately, you've probably noticed a concrete pad that is set there, poured, and just really set there. Um, with, with the NFC grant that we had received earlier, actually late last year, we have put that into um, motion. Uh, that requires, that pad requires a 28-day cure period prior to construction on the pad. So uh, that, that time has passed and we plan to begin uh, or have scheduled to begin work uh, next week, weather permitting. And that's all I have. Council comments. Start with Amanda. Again, thank you for everybody at the city. Thank you for all you do for us. Um, all the hard work that goes on behind the scenes. We might be the volunteer face, but um, you're the ones who put in all the effort. So thank you very much. And um, school starts back up Monday. So watch out for the kiddos and watch your seat. <coughs> Kid, as usual, you <laughs> Cut out there. I was on mention the schools. I have a granddaughter who's a third grade teacher. Actually, they your birthday. She's busy working at school already. Next week we have the kids. It's going to get dark soon. I believe it or not. Got to be careful around the school zones. The flashing lights. Watch for kids. Mr. Liberty. What I'd like to bring up is about yesterday. I was fortunate enough to be able to attend the SFP annual meeting, which had, and I don't know how many people understand what that's about, but it's all, all about supporting the fort, which also supports St. Roberts and Waynesville. Uh, they had a lot of excellent speakers. Mr. Dorsey had briefed us on SOP and what they've done and what they plan on doing. Uh, 
Major General Bonner briefed on regional community support, the Fort Leonard Wood perspective. Governor Mike Parsons, Fort Leonard Wood service members, military families, and veterans' impact on the state of Missouri. And Honorable Roy Blunt, uh, via video, pre recorded message, partnership in strengthening Fort Leonard Wood. Honorable Josh Hawley, Fort Leonard Wood's role in support of our national defense now and in the future in the SASC perspective. Honorable Vicki Hartzler, Future of Defense, Fort Leonard Wood Opportunities and Challenges, View from the HASC. Honorable Rochelle Jacobson, who's the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Installation. Uh, she covered how communities can best support Army installations. Mr. Harry Roberts, a military, Missouri military advocate about actions to support uh, Fort Leonard service members and families. Mike Bose, Director of Defense International, Kit Bond Strategy, State Consultant, covered a Washington perspective. Mr. Joe Driscoll, Association in Defense Communities Update. He is immediate past president, ADC National Board of Directors. And uh, Mr. Dorsey, retired command sergeant major Dorsey, SOP in our regional strategy going forward. It was excellent. Uh, you could learn a lot about what our community and Fort Leonard Wood is doing to continue to thrive and grow. Uh, and there's a lot of business opportunities for businesses and such to become members of SOP. That's all I have. Mr. Rice. Yes, I'm encouraged about the citizens' comments. Uh, we heard two really good ones tonight. A lot of passion in that. I think you bring it to council and everyone, you get some resolutions that way. Um, last month we had a good one too. And we just want to wish everyone. Happy Labor Day. Be safe. Mr. Wilson. I was going to say, um, you know, that uh, this community is, is something special. And the reason why I say that is because I've been to many different communities um, throughout my, my military tenure. And uh, as far as a community and the military installation, as Mr. Liberty was talking about, the SOP um, really communicates that everyone has the same um, goals, maybe our priorities are not always the same. And I think that we all have a heart for the growth of this community. And, and just like tonight when we had the volunteers that were here um, expressing their, their passion about serving this community and, and putting our best foot forward. And I think that says a lot about the people that live here and, and one of the reasons why I chose to stay here. But I just want to thank the volunteers and everyone here. I know including the council men and women um, that volunteer every, their time to serve this community because they believe in it. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all of my, my fellow councilmen and council women and, um, and the staff here, but also to those that are volunteering to coach three teams. Is, that's something else. That's something special up in its own. And I'm, I'm saying that that's not something that should be taken lightly to where um, she said no, she'll just go. I mean, it's just, that's something to be said there. So I just want to say um, we would like to have more people volunteer within the community and be a part of our um, community and making things better. Um, but I also want to say thank you to those that have already done it and continue to do it. That's all I have. Mr. Davis. I would like to reiterate about the volunteers. I, I know sometimes I come off a little harsh, but there is actually a huge volunteer problem everywhere that you look at. Uh, you, you can look at the city itself. We all volunteer to be on this council, but there's seven or eight committees in the city also. Uh, some of those committees don't have enough volunteers and members to open up the committee sometimes. And then you have like the lady there, 
she volunteers for three soccer teams. Okay, I think people are starting to frown on government and so much stuff these days because of bad taste from political sides and everything else that they no longer want to volunteer. They no longer want to put their face out there. Uh, I'll give you an instance. You know, me, for instance, I've probably been beaten down since March 31st. Uh, at least five to ten phone calls a day. Um, so, volunteer. Uh, and, and if you want something done, you've got to put yourself out there to do it. You, you just can't sit back and, you know, wait for somebody to come knock on your door and say, hey, this is done. you got to get out there and you got to press the pavement and do the work to get stuff done. Mr. Farnham. I just want to say everybody have a safe Labor Day. Enjoy the last little bit of summer. Before you know it, we'll be turning furnaces on. And that's a scary thought to price of fuel being one of these. Okay. Thank you for your comments. I do want to point out those two ladies that came in. That's probably the best presentation of, of a citizen coming in to point out a problem without accusing us of too much bad faith. We need to work with them as best we can. And uh, the second thing I wish everyone could have seen when Senator Josh Hawley spoke, and he spoke for quite a few minutes without any notes, the passion he showed about what he's trying to do for this country is unbelievable. That would have been something that everybody should have seen. We're adjourned.